if you had to pick your favorite season, summer just might win out. Trips to the pool, to the seashore, uh, picnics, barbecues, camp, family vacations, time in the garden, and lots of unhurried projects. Today's show is filled with fun summertime ideas for kids and grown-ups alike. And we've chosen some of our favorite classic segments from the first 11 seasons of our television show. But first, one of my favorite things, taking questions from the audience. Who in the audience has a question? Ah, right here? Oh, right here first? Okay. Hi. Hi, Martha. My name is Lisa from Michigan. How do you and do? I have a question. I planted some mint in my garden, just a little patch, and then it took over. And over the years, it is totally devoured my entire garden. It tends I to tried be... Roundup. I, I even poured gasoline on it. Oh! <laughs> so I don't know what to do. How can I get rid of it? Well, I would dig it up, actually. Okay. Uh, don't put gasoline in your I garden. Know. Oh, please, don't do that. And if it's, is it in a vegetable garden or no. a, a flower garden? A perennial garden. A perennial garden. Um, I would just dig it up. It's hard to, um, um, mint is one of those things that just travels under the ground. The root system is quite amazing. And uh, I would dig it up, uh, keep digging it up every time you see a sprout come up. And next time, plant your mint in a um, pot or in a garden that is surrounded with a uh, sort of a stone um, uh, border. Uh, you can, I like to do it against a building with a border in front of it. You can put in any kind of edging that will retain the roots in that specific area. Okay. So what, no gasoline, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Another question. <laughs> um, hello. Martha, this is I'm Elaine from Michigan also. This is my daughter. Oh, hi. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite Polish meal? And where in New York City can I get a good meal? Oh, Polish okay, dinner. Polish meal. Well, favorite. my favorite is consists of an awful lot of things because my mom uh, uh, loves to make pierogi. I love that. And she fills hers with sweet cabbage and potato and um, in the summertime, fresh peaches or plums. Those are delicious, the fruit ones. Um, I like stuffed cabbage. I like um, sourgrass soup, the shav. I like that very much. I love kielbasa, and, and you know, in the in the winter time with horseradish. Oh, I could go on and on. And in New York, there's actually some uh, nice Polish restaurants down on First Avenue, uh, down around uh, anywhere between Seventh uh, and Tenth Street on First Avenue. You can find uh, quite a few Polish restaurants down in that Thank neighborhood. You. And enjoy it. Thank, Thank you. you. Here we have another question. Hi. Hi, Martha. My name is Stephanie Smith, and I'm from Ceres, California. Um, my question for you is, the past two years, I've dressed up as you for Halloween. Um, Thank and you it's very been a much. big hit. <laughs> and um, so I'm wondering if you might have any suggestions for what the Martha Stewart look will be for this next October. Oh, for next, uh, this coming <laughs> Halloween? Well, you know, I have not really thought about it. Um, but... Um, the poncho uh, was a big hit last oh, year. Oh, I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, watch in September, you'll start to get some clues, okay? Thank you. And, uh, and if you leave your name, maybe we'll email you oh. some hints. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your questions. When we come back, my good friend and soprano star Lorraine Bracco helps me make an easy, refreshing summer dessert called Granita. You're going to love it. We'll be right back. Later, Martha shows you how to make a simple summer toy that'll keep the kids cool this summer. Don't go away. A very refreshing summer dessert is granito, which is a frozen mixture of water, sugar, and liquid flavoring, similar to Italian ices. When Lorraine Bracco visited, we made granita and paired it with grapefruit sections. It is delicious, and you're going to want to try it. The other night, I went to a wonderful restaurant in New York City. It's called Guastavino. And I had a spectacular dessert, Lorraine Bracco, something that I think you will really like. It's called a granita. It's a frozen liquid. And this one happens to be made out of something that I also like very much, vermouth. We're using a really wonderful dry vermouth called Noy Pratt. I've always had this in my martinis. What so. kind of martinis do you like? Vodka. Oh, really? But not very often. I don't really drink very much, but what do you like to drink? The olive. Oh, one and three quarters cups of sugar. You already did that? Yes. Okay, and now we need the uh, zest, and I'm taking it off with a potato peeler because we want only 
the colored skin. We don't want any of that white pith from underneath. How are you okay. doing? <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I asked to do it with a knife, but I'm just do it with a knife. If you feel more comfortable. This is much better to do. Well, it's just that you can get off a thin strip this way, but if it's too hard. No, no, it's quite all right. Struggle, struggle. We don't have to struggle while we cook. No, I like struggling. You do? While I cook. <laughs> you need one and three quarters cups of vermouth. And the That's zest done. of a lemon and a zest of a lime. And two and three quarters cups also of water. Can I reach over you and get this pan? So sure. That, so that we can show what we're doing here. So here is the noyi prat, the two and three quarters cups of water, the zest, the one and three quarters cups of sugar. And if you just light that burner, what we want to do is bring this syrup to a boil. Oh, good. Ah. Okay. <laughs> now, when it cools after it has boiled, and we have one over there, you could take all that lemon peel and lime peel out. Out, yes. And then the simple thing about this ice that we're making is that you just pour the liquid into a glass casserole like this. This is a 13 by 9 inch glass baking dish. Okay, and why don't you just pour all that liquid right in here? And you put it right into the freezer for about eight hours or overnight. Martha, I really want to come back and cook. Okay, well, this is cooking of sorts. Well, this is dessert ice water cooking. <laughs> <laughs> now, it doesn't look like anything, but the fragrance is amazing. It does look like clear water, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, well, if you open the Careful. freezer for me. And now I'd like to show you how to supreme a grapefruit. And it is important that you have stainless steel knives. Why? Well, because um, any kind of carbon steel will darken the fruit. Now, we want to cut off the top. Okay. And the, that's the stem end, yes. And what we're trying to do is get just down to the fruit. <sighs> there, that's good. And okay. then they take off the other end. Okay. Again, getting down to the fruit, removing all the white pith. We want to use a kind of a ruby red grapefruit. Okay, now with as few cuts as possible, we want to slide the knife this way and down, just uncovering the beautiful, colorful grapefruit without removing too much of it. Martha, I already saw you do this on the show. You did? Yes. Oh, okay. Lorraine is an avid watcher of the program, I found out. <laughs> <laughs> you can do this with lemons, you can do it with limes, you can do it with oranges, and you have perfect, perfect segments. Oh, Martha, yours is there. perfect. Well, it's, it's about getting all that white off. Okay, fine. And then you hold the grapefruit in the palm of your hand like that, and just slide out the segments. Cut down the sides of the membranes and watch out for your hands. Okay. <laughs> it takes a little bit. She did see this before, but obviously she did not practice before she came I on the show. Didn't. That's oh, what it, it looks, looks like after it's frozen overnight. You can do half, and I'll do half. Just draw your fork down through the surface of your granny top. See how pretty this breaks up? It's, it's sparkly, beautiful. it's glistening. And this is exactly the right consistency and texture. So now arrange your grapefruits and then take your wonderful granny top oh, like it's that. Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Looks like okay. a starfish. Here's one for you. And this is so easy. It is a delightful end to any meal. I just think that is such a pretty dessert. Great combination with the grapefruit. Oh my God, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for helping me. <laughs> and I, no, you have your own. And um, Lorraine Bracco, I hope will come again and visit with us. And what do you want to cook next time? Uh, anything 101 will be perfect. Okay. <laughs> we'll arrange that. Thanks a lot, Lorraine. Mm. Wasn't that yummy? Well, next I'm going to show you how to make really fun water toys that your kids are going to love. And all you need are sponges. Later, learn how to transform plain flip-flops into mini works of art. And you've never seen anything quite like the amazing Argentinian barbecue Martha sets up in the backyard. Plus, you'll get lots of recipes for a fabulous feast. Stay with us. If you're looking for a really good way to keep the kids cool on a really hot day, make sponge balls. Watch this. Well, it's hot outside, so hot outside. And what would be more fun to cool off than a sponge fight? These are sponges made into balls. They're very cute. They're harmless and they're easy to make. 
and it would be perfect to have a little sponge party just like that. <laughs> so easy. Take four sponges, just little celluloid sponges that you get at the supermarket. You can find big bags of them too sometimes at the discount stores. Cut each sponge in half and then each half in half so that you have four strips from each sponge. And it's nice to get a variety of colors because they're cute like this. And then we're going to make checkerboards. So we have blue and green for this one. Couldn't be easier. And this actually is great for little kids because they will learn how to make a checkerboard, which might be slightly surprising to them, but very easy. And there, once they make a sponge bowl like this, then they can make checkerboard cookies. Now take a piece of very strong twine and cinch these sponges right across the middle as tight as you can, keeping the ends as straight as you can. Really tie these tightly. And what's nice about this wax twine is that it kind of sticks to itself and you get a tighter tie than with something that doesn't stick there. And then trim the edges of your twine. Throw these in a bowl. Soak them with water. And depending on how wet you want to get, start tossing either full of water or squeezed out a bit. The kids are gonna have a ball. The children of our staff members spent hours in the backyard playing with the sponge balls and they had a really great time. Now, here's a great project for girls of all ages who wear flip-flops, especially teenagers. They're gonna wanna do this craft project. Flip-flops and slides are really the rage this summer. Every single magazine has flip-flops. Do you like flip-flops, Lauren McGrath? I love flip-flops. I live in them. You do? Yeah. Suzanne McGrath's daughter is Lauren, and she's standing next to me, and she's been on the show before. I'm sure you've seen her. And we asked her to uh, really help me with this because she's the teenager who knows all about style, right? Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so I decided that I would like to decorate my s slides with buttons, and these buttons come from Making Memories. They're all beautiful colors, and they're flat so that they can really be applied with Fabri-Tac or another kind of good, strong glue to the, the top of the slides. I still have the little paper insert just to keep it stiff so I can press. Mm -hmm. And you are going to I'm gonna decorate use with these trimmings, yeah, and you can buy these at M and J trimmings. And look, oh so sort of a rayon fringe. Yeah. Now those are beautiful. And oh I love how they look with that. So why don't you show how you're doing that? And okay. you're using two kinds of glue or one? Um two kinds of glue. This um fray check you just um, we're going to put it in here and then on each end so that they don't fray. Oh good. And then this you're just going to put right on here. Excellent. And I'll just make up a design of buttons on mine, okay? Okay. And I'm just going to do mine with the Fabri-Tac. Fabri All of these glues are so amazing these days. It's just incredible what you can find. Now, how many pairs of flip-flops do you have and what colors? Uh, well, I have the standard black. Um, are they rubber or flip-flops or? Well, let me see, just. Oh yeah, you need a new pair. Okay. <laughs> They're oh, kind of boring. Yeah, but those are good. Those are good kind of camping type. So these slides cost about twenty dollars. And you prefer the ribbons? Yeah, I like the ribbons. Do you wear them with all clothes or? Yeah, I wear them with anything. These are great because they're not so boring. They're more fun. Yeah, look how great they look. Match my outfit. Very nice. Yeah, thing. I like them. So. Just make sure you let the buttons really dry before you put these on. And all these patterns are great. I love these. Don't they look great? That looks great. Yeah, yeah. I love those. This is a really pretty one with the, a little bit of beading on the ribbon. That's, mm -hmm. great. That's from uh, M&J also? Yeah, M&J oh, also. Oh, I really like that. Sparkly. But these are fun presents. They're nice to give to friends. So custom-made flip-flops slides in a matter of minutes with very few ingredients. So what do you think, Lauren? Do you want my buttons or do you want your slides? I like them both. You do? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can put them on 
and take a walk. And if it's hot where you are today, I hope you can find a little time for a swim. And if you aren't near a pool or the beach, why not frolic in the sprinkler with the kids? Making sponge balls, embellishing flip-flops are just two of the many projects included on our Summer Favorites DVD, along with more than a dozen recipes and other great ideas to make your summer lively and fun. And everyone in the audience is getting a copy. This is available wherever DVDs are sold. Or you can go to our website, MarthaStewart.com. Next, a backyard grilling fest you won't want to miss. And later, Martha teaches ambitious youngsters how to set up a lemonade stand guaranteed to bring in the business. Stay with us. One of our most memorable grilling experiences was in 1998 when my friend Sasa Boutouz, who is the owner of Barcelona Restaurant and Wine Bar in South Norwalk, Connecticut, brought his Argentinian barbecue called an asado right to our beautiful backyard in Connecticut. Take a look at this. Shasha, I am so glad you could come here. I'm very happy to And uh, I'm very happy to see this fabulous grill that you built right out here in my backyard at the studio. <laughs> this is quite an extraordinary construction made out of fire brick, out of bluestone, and a wonderfully built V-grill. You know, in Argentina, and I have been to Argentina since I last saw you. That's beautiful. And we had an asado, the original Argentinian barbecue. It's a very typical way to cook uh, down there, and I don't think enough of us in North America really understand or know how to cook in this slow, flavorful way. That's right. In Argentina, cooking really takes time. There's kind of a ritual thing where people eat two, three hours because it's, it's a break. It's a break in life from the hard work. And instead of searing very high heats, they use very low heats. And then the grilling, they move around the little embers so it doesn't get too hot. Well, why don't you describe what you're doing with the peppers and I will keep preparing our meats over here. We're just roasting peppers here on a nice, even heat. So we're getting them charred outside. They look good. Don't they? I think they I'm gonna do. throw some of these wonderful, tasty little chorizos on a higher heat because you want them sear first and then you can no. put them down on a lower heat. I'm just scoring the tops of the lamb chops. Is that okay? S sounds great. Everything's flavored with just salt and pepper, right? Yes. Because we're going to have something called chimichurri, which is the Argentinian version of salsa. Your mother's version. You know, I, I never that's, tasted that's any other. Actually, that's a Hungarian I, version. I think it is a Hungarian <laughs> version because yes. it has paprika. a lot of paprika in it. Now, the morcilla. 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 And we're using pusan today, chickens less than a year old. And instead of cutting them down the backbone, we just cut through the breastbone with a scissor. You can see how it's split that way. Cut off the wing tips, because those will only burn if they're left on the embers. And also chop off just the ends of the drumsticks. And I'm breaking the ribs. Yes, you want break them. Punch so you're it. almost, yes. yes. You can use a smasher if you want but you want this to be flat. So again, so it cooks evenly. That's Josh has brought along all his friends, his new beautiful wife. Welcome, everybody. Wow. It's amazing. They Drink all up the wine, <laughs> enjoy yourself. We Absolutely. have the perfect Cheers. evening for this. So is this slow cooking enough? It's Boy, does it look good. Now that we seared it, we're gonna move the coals. You see what I'm doing right now? Yep. Is I'm moving the embers further away. But don't forget, these brick stones also retain a lot of the heat. So you heat. can almost cook over them once they you get hot enough. You can almost cook over them. And this grill, if you notice, all the fat coming down the Vs and dripping into this drip pan right here. I'm preparing the kidneys. These are beef kidneys, large beef kidneys. And what I'm doing is just taking out a little bit of that fatty core from the kidneys. And you're going to cut these into smaller pieces. You don't want to put on a great big whole kidney. And your father always salted these. Yes. Very nicely. Plenty of salt, yeah, always. Plenty of salt. Get it all in the convolutions of the kidney. Beautiful. Yeah, that looks good. Not everybody's going to want these <laughs> kidneys. But it's funny, once you taste them, they really are delicious. You have to slice them thinly. I think these peppers are ready. Can I put the kidneys on? Absolutely. I would put them on this end, where there's a little high heat. 
Kidneys don't take long. You almost want to sear them from the outside. But another thing I remember from your dad's asado is that when something was done, mm -hmm. you ate it. You didn't yes, wait. wait. And that's all. what can keep the asado going for hours. You cook a little bit, you eat it. You rest, you drink a glass of wine, then you Socialize. cook something else, and you save the steaks for last. Rachel, would you like to come over and help us out with these sausages? Sure. Doesn't look good. Now here's a chimichurri. Every time you serve something, you want to put one on there? We're going to serve the chorizo first, and then we're going to go to the morcilla. This is the salsa, the Hungarian version of an Argentinian favorite. Every single chef has his or her own recipe. I think the chefs have to share here together. Um, thank you, Martha. Now, the morcilla, I'm going to cut into single servings here. Time for the morcilla, guys. Come on over with your plates. This is the blood sausage. Okay. Just eat it with a lot of bread and chimichurri. Martha, I'm putting these onions on. I'm also going to put some zucchinis onto the grill. Why don't you and I enjoy our sausage and let these things slow cook? Once I you like that idea. I'm going to put these zucchinis on there, and let's feast on those morcillas. And the kidneys are the almost kidneys ready. The kidneys almost ready, but we got a low enough heat that we got time to savor those morcillas. OK. A very important part of an Argentinian barbecue is the chimichurri, which is the sauce that flavors the meat. I was eager to learn Sasa's mother's recipe because it was really delicious. Here it is. The foundation of the sauce is parsley. Two thirds of a cup of flat leaf parsley finely chopped. And then the other third is finely minced garlic. You have to mince everything as much as you can because it's gonna be a sauce. So a third of a cup of minced garlic, a half a cup of vegetable oil. And then we do a little apple vinegar. Apple cider vinegar right out of the grocery store. We need a fourth of a cup. So further. lots of black pepper. Lots of black pepper. And one teaspoon of salt. Exactly. There we go. And one teaspoon of cayenne. Three tablespoons of paprika. One and a half tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Mm. There we go. That and adds the sweetness. And one tablespoon of that dried oregano. There we go. Now this looks really good. Layered, very thick. Don't make it the same day as your asado. Make it like a week before. Exactly. And keep it in the refrigerator. Now, if you keep it in the refrigerator, you want to freshen it up. You can always put a little chopped parsley, a little chopped garlic, mm. and a dash of vinegar. Vinegar always brings it back to life. Oh, good. They're devouring everything, as they should. Now, if you'd like some kidneys, just come on over here and help yourselves, OK? I know you're all going to rush over. <laughs> the most popular ingredient of the asado is the kidneys. I'm just joking. Personally, I couldn't wait for the beef kidneys. When we come back, Sasha reveals the secrets for grilling that perfect steaks and chops. Stay with us. Later, learn how to transform a basic towel into a giant tic-tac-toe board. It's a beach-going good thing. Don't go away. Hotel accommodations provided by the Westin New York and Times Square featuring Westin's renowned heavenly beds. For an outstanding New York experience, visit this superb location. We continued our Argentinian barbecue by cooking steaks, lamb chops, and chicken. Watch how the asado all comes together. Okay. Excellent. Shasha is the proprietor of a very interesting restaurant in Norwalk, Connecticut called Barcelona. Tell us about the food. Well, it's more Mediterranean. We have tapas. We have a tapas bar where, like in Spain, where you can go up to the bar and you can ask for a little piece of this, a little piece of that, a sherry or a glass of wine. Very yeah. lively, fun place yeah. to go. This is so much fun. I'm so glad that you're doing this with me. Now, these are rib lamb chops. Exactly. Delicious. Add a little salt and pepper to them. Wonderful. Mm. And so the zucchini is almost done, don't you think? They're caramelized on the outside, and they're going to be very tender and juicy on the inside. The nicest, because they're, they? so, they're cooking Slow. so slowly. Exactly. 
And notice, Shasha, slice them about a half an inch thick. So pretty compared to uh, the very thin ones that kind of burn up on the grill. I think we got a nice little heat going here. I'm gonna put some more coals yeah, underneath. Yeah, we need a little bit over here. Looks like we're doing very well. Oh, the lamb, look how great it looks. I'm gonna flip this a little bit because we got a little... Can I just grab this? Look at that, nice mm. one. Please. Here we go. your last little piece. If you think things are cooking too quickly, you take some salt water, and Batu's always had a jar like this with a pierced cover, and he would just go like that, a little sprinkle, just to cool things down a little bit. Yeah, doesn't that work great? I think so. I think yeah. it flavored everything and also steamed it a little bit. I don't know if you noticed, but there's really hardly ever a flare up. I mean, literally, you can cook a duck on this, and it makes it a whole different kind of flavor. It's almost smoky. So, Shasha, what do you know about Argentinian beef? Well, my experience was that the Argentinian beef has a lot more flavor. It takes a little while to get used to it. It's but tougher. Because they're free grazing, I guess. Is that what it is? Grass-fed. Grass-fed, and it's a wilder flavor. I'm going to give you a little more coal. Now we're going, going at a really nice pace. We got all these extra nice little embers here. I'm going to put it under the steak so we can sear it. Lamb is almost ready. Anybody for a lamb chop? Wow. Oh, see, I knew everybody will come over for the lamb chops. Right. Un argentino acá. Mm -hmm. Tiene un argentino argentino, huh? That's for you. So good. Cebola. 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 Do you want a zucchini also? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Take more chimichurri. Yeah. There's a lamb chop for you, John. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really good. Oh, okay. Now, so I'm going to try the lamb, lamb chop. Yes, me too. How does it taste? Mmm. Tender? Oh, just a little bit more. Mmm. Mmm. I think the best lamb chop I've ever had, Sasha. The fun went on and on, and I couldn't thank Sasha enough for coming. It was really a very special day. Next, setting up a lemonade stand can be as much fun for the kids as selling the lemonade. I'll show you some great ideas. We'll be right back. Manning a lemonade stand is a great way for kids to enjoy a beautiful day outdoors and earn a little pocket money. The entire process from setting up the stand to making the lemonade is also a great learning experience. Take a look at this. Selling lemonade just wouldn't be the same without a great lemonade stand. And my friends today, Christopher and Megan McDonough, whose mother works at the TV studio, are getting the stand ready. And we're gonna have a pretty fancy stand, I would say, wouldn't you, Chris? Yep. We have a very nice price of 50 cents a glass, and it's fresh homemade lemonade. And we're now putting up, between two posts, a sign made out of craft paper. And it is pink block letters, here's an A, and you have to finish the D and the e. e. Okay, so finish those up. I'll finish putting up the steaks, okay? Okay. And now to put the steaks up, this is one that's already in the ground. It's just a one by two that's hammered into the ground and it has a little eye hook here so that if you really want to do a lemonade stand year after year, you can make this once and you never have to make it again. And the bottoms of the posts are cut to points so that they'll easily go into the ground if your ground is soft enough. My ground is pretty hard, so we're using just a little crowbar type tool here to make a hole to put that V into. And here, that's very easy. And you'll need a small sledgehammer like this to pound on top of the wood. And we have a nice sturdy step ladder. Catch me if I fall, kids. <laughs> Can you tell me, Chris, if this is even to the other one? Use your arm and reach up and see if it's about the same distance. Okay, with a little bit on your toes. Uh, this is a little, little higher, lower. right? Yeah. That's what I would say. Now be careful not to pound too hard. You don't want to split your nice steak. That looks good. 
And are we almost finished with those yeah, last two letters? Me, you know. Yes. Okay, so put that on. Lemon aid. Now you have to punch your holes so that we can run this string through. Just about an inch in from the edge. Really great. And about a half inch down. You no, know, a little further. Go this way. This way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that way's fine. Right there? Yeah, right there's perfect. Now go over two inches. That's fine. Very sharp, don't you think? Yeah. And then two yeah, inches. two inches, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Right there is fine. Is that okay? Perfect. And then an inch in from this edge. So I'll just thread this through. We're going to use a natural twine. And we put a little bit of scotch tape around the edge so that it will not fray. We're sewing as if we were sewing anything. In and out, in and out. What are you doing for the summer? I'm going to visit my relatives yeah. and stuff. Oh, how nice. Maybe a little bit more here, Megan. OK. Just put it on the screen. We don't want it to loosen. OK. And this one, too. In Cape Cod? Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to go Cape Cod. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, we have an older brother that's 14. Is he nice to you? Um, not all the time. <laughs> but will he buy lemonade from your lemonade stand? That's what I want to know. I don't um, know. You don't Probably know. not. Probably mm -hmm. not. OK, so these can be folded like this. And you, you hold this end, and I'll start, well, I'll start with the end. It's OK, here, you hold that. I'll start with the end of lemonade, which is E, okay. right here. Now, we're going to have to see if this fits across there. Hopefully, it will be long enough, so I won't tie this securely yet. Doesn't that look cute? Looks mm -hmm. very cute. Well, I, I better reach because I'm taller. Does it spell lemonade? Yeah. Yep. Correctly? Yeah. L E M O N A D E. Good. And do you think that will attract business? Yeah, um, probably. <laughs> that's what we have to do. When you're trying to sell something, you have to do it so that it will attract customers. There. OK, so there we have our nice lemonade. And that looks like it'll certainly attract attention. Should we, like, put the? Oh, that would be nice, too. Now, we have our cash box. Your dad's best cigar box would be excellent. Does your dad smoke cigars? Um, no. No, so you might have to borrow a cigar box yeah. from somebody. Or a shoe box works. But this is nice, and we've put a little tab here out of bias tape, which helps a lot to open it and close it. And always have a little bit of extra change. So uh, your 50 cent sign will be held, because we don't want to make holes in this pretty table. Yeah. So you want to hold it with that rock? OK. And the same block letters right here is good. Here, you have to let it fall over. Let it fall down. No, I can just oh. put it under it. Yeah, that's good. Oh, once the stand was ready for business, it was time to make the lemonade. Look. I think everybody in the neighborhood will really be impressed that this lemonade is made out of real lemons. There are lots of different kinds of lemonades on the market, but if you really want something special, you have to make it out of fresh lemons. Right, Chris? Yep. You wouldn't sell lemonade that's made from a can. No. No way, right? Nope. Now, it's a little bit more expensive to use real lemons, but I think you can pass along the expense to the customer. And Chris is hand squeezing all the lemons. It's hard. These are big, thick skinned lemons. But to make lemonade enough to fill this container, we have some homemade lemon syrup. It's a sugar syrup of water, sugar, and lemon peels. And we're just pouring in, oh, about a cup of it. This is our sweetener. And we're going to add one cup of the fresh squeezed lemon juice and lots of crushed ice. And if you keep your ice maker going at home, do you have an ice maker in your kitchen? Yeah. Oh, good. So you're going to have to make sure, if you're going to be doing a lemonade stand, that you make lots of ice, bag it in plastic bags, and have it ready for the lemonade stand day, OK? Mm -hmm. Very important to have lots of ice. You could have a cooler right outside by the lemonade stand so you can keep your ice frozen and have plenty of it. So we want a lot of crushed ice and eight cups of water and about, oh, I'd, I'd say about a cup of fresh lemon juice, too. We're going to save all the lemon peel for the compost heap. That is 
certainly a good idea. But we could throw in a couple of the fresh lemon peels, too. Throw that one right in here. Oh, oh in here? Yeah, just for looks, you know. Megan, are you all done with yeah. those big confetti squares? Did you taste one? Yeah. What do you think? I think they're really good. Oh, we definitely need the lemon juice. That will make this lemonade. So pour that right into here. The whole thing. And we'll stir that up. Let me just give that a little bit of a taste. Mmm. What do you think? Yep, that's really good. Refreshing, not too sweet, not too sour. Do you think we can get 50 cents a cup? Yep. I think so. Okay, <laughs> so here, put that over on your table and let's make sure that the customers start to come. Now, how are you going to attract them? To smile? Smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be your first customer if you don't mind. Okay. Could I please have one cup of lemonade? Okay, Megan. And a little ice, hold a cup over here, over, okay. over there. That's right. Excellent. And I will be very happy for 50 cents to get a glass of freshly squeezed lemonade on a hot summer day. There you go. That is so great. Well, here's my 50 cents. Thank you, Chris. Here, have a napkin, Martha. Oh, I would appreciate that greatly. Here you go. Great. Well, I think you better stir up some business. What are you going to do? Uh, I'll smile and yell lemonade. OK. Lemonade, 50 cents a glass. Having fun, earning some money, and sipping delicious lemonade outdoors on a summer day. What could be better? Next, a good thing for the beach, a tic tac towel. I'll show you how to make it when we come back. Stay here. Well, whether you're headed to the beach or to the pool or even going to the backyard, a tic-tac towel is a great way to have fun outdoors. And if you want to see how to make this very good thing, there, tic-tac-toe. I'll show you how. It's really quite simple. Take a good-sized beach towel and some grow grain ribbon. I find that grow grain washes really well and make sure it's color fast uh, and get about three yards of, rib of ribbon. Uh, cut it into 24 inch strips and you'll need four strips. And uh, if you wanna use up all three yards of ribbon, uh, you'll make the strips a little bit longer than 24 inches. We were just trying to figure that out. And uh, pin the um, ribbons in a crisscross pattern emulating the real tic-tac-toe game. And you can stitch this right on your sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can use uh, Fabri-Tac glue. It will not stay on as long as if you sew the ribbon on, but it will work for a, um, a fun project and you can take it to the beach. Um, and then sew right down the ribbon. And it's just as simple as can be. You'll have, here I'm just getting my foot pedal and you just stitch right down the edge of the ribbon. I love projects like this because they really are easy. Uh, the result is colorful and beautiful. And you have a game, just imagine. Not only do you have a beach towel, you have a game that can be played with shells or starfish or uh, sea dollars that you pick up on the beach. Old dog bones on our beach or horseshoe crabs who have left their shells. But uh, it's a lot of fun. I love going to the beach and I love playing games on the beach. There, it's almost done. This is just one wonderful project that you're going to find on our new DVD also. So if you know someone with a summer birthday, a Tic Tac towel makes a great gift. It's also a great hostess gift, too, if you're going to visit somebody on the beach. There you have it, Tic Tac Towel. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as we enjoyed putting it together. For more information on today's program, go to our website, MarthaStewart.com. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.